This video is about making RMS or rosemary mint sage. This treats um, a lot of different skin problems, bug bites, um, chiggers. Though with chiggers and with poison ivy and things like that, you have to reply it. Uh, generally with mosquito bites and things like that, you put it on it and the itch goes away. But since the chigger kind of moves around, sometimes you'll have to reapply it. And because of poison ivy's nature of getting under the skin, you may have to reapply it there too. It is antiviral and antibacterial, and um, it really is good for so many topical things. Yeah. I made a tea out of the three and uh, uh, used it when I had a sore throat or a mouth sores, and it also relieves that very quickly. This is not a tea. This is a topical solution, and I hope that um, you can get something out of the video that will make your life better. I'm going to show you how I make rosemary mint sage. It is one of the easiest things to make. Now these have all been washed and uh, drained. And I'm going to just put equal amounts of the three the three plants, the rosemary, the mint, and the sage. I like the white sage a little better. This is the white sage, um, and I like it a little better than the common sage for doing this. That's common sage. This is the white sage. Um, I just like it. It has a little um, better success rate. But I am using both of them tonight. Then I am using mint and I am using the whole plant. But I am not using any plants with flowers. And that was kind of difficult because our mint is in flower right now. It's really too early for that. But the mint didn't care if it was too early for uh, the flower. Zip flowered anyway. Just kind of packing it in there until I get it pretty much packed into the jar. Equal amounts of rosemary, mint, and sage. That's that's the whole recipe right there. Well, that's most of the recipe. Okay, I think I've about, looks like it's pretty equal. I'll put a little bit more rosemary in it and squish that down in there. You're supposed to um, have the water boiling when you pour it over. The clean jar, the clean herbs, and then cap it. And you just bring the, the water up to the place where the top of the herbs is. I washed and heated the lid. I'll put it on it. And I'll kind of turn it and be sure that those herbs are all down in that water. Now that's going to sit until tomorrow morning, at least five hours. I like overnight. I would rather have 12 hours. And that's going to sit until tomorrow, and then I will show you how you process it out 
and um, put it up in jars. Okay, I have um, um, sanitized everything with hot water. And I loosened this a minute ago. I should have waited because you could have heard the uh, the uh, seal pop. Frequently, the seal. And there is, uh, when I got this, one of the things that the site I got it off of said is that uh, you can save this in this sealed jar for up to a week before you put it up. Uh, I've never done that. Well, I did keep it for three or four days one time, and it worked just fine. Um, oh, yeah. There is a lot of stuff in there. There it is, and I'll have to do a couple of these. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take my little uh, board that I use, my little rod that I use as a pestle. I, I don't want the fiber in there. All I want is the oils and the... Uh, vitamin content and such of the uh, herbs. This quart jar, once we take the herbs out of it, We'll make a little, whoops, 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 that came off of there. We'll make a little bit more than a pint. Not quite three cups. I'm just pressing all the liquid and all the good stuff out of uh, this rosemary, mint, and sage. Leaves, stems. I do not put the mint flowers or the sage flowers, well, rosemary flowers either, Though uh, all of my old rosemary died in the freeze that we had in February. So I probably won't get flowers on my rosemary for a couple years. Because rosemary has to be mature before it starts flowering. And that is pretty well pressed. Okay. Now these jars have, have been sanitized. And I am going to fill them. These have a, a long shelf life because um, they are uh, so anti-bacterial, anti-fungal, etc. So it'll stay pretty good. The reason I put them in brown bottles 
is to keep them from being affected by light. And uh, the light does affect it. It tends to turn it brown. They'll turn brown in time anyway, but it does not change the uh, effectiveness of the uh, solution. I expected it to be closer to the quart, but it isn't. The reason I push on that is because the silicone uh, funnels have a tendency to lock into the side of that and it keeps it from, from uh, flowing down through there. It airlocks it. So, there is about a half a bottle. And uh, those will serve us very, very nicely. Uh, and I can probably give some away. Usually I try to give the smaller bottles away, but I don't have any of the small bottles right now. I hope you gained some good knowledge and um, maybe something that will be helpful to you. And I will see you again next time in my kitchen or in my studio or perhaps in my adventure bus.